So today we're going to cover a question that was sent in and it's one of those important questions you ask in life to filter or not to filter. Well, uh, let's see. So this came in from Steph from France, I believe. And Steph says, I would like to filter, for example, during the period of September 2017 and would like to see the graphics from January through September. Is that possible without duplicating the calendar table? So when I first you know, kind of looked at it, I'm like, oh, that's just sales year date, but not quite. So I'll show you what the challenge is. So we have a graph, let's say, showing the full year. And if we pick September, you know, we only see one month. We don't want, we want to see the year to date. And even though you notice I have defined this measure sales year to date, but when you filter down that table, it kind of filters down the axes and it doesn't show you any other months. So let's see if there is a way to solve this problem. But before that, hey, I just wanted to share a quick update with you. Uh, since I'm not going to be doing the talk Power BI this Friday, <coughs> you can see I still have the cough. Uh, so we just closed enrollment for our new learn power bi class and i am so excited to have this class on and some of you may have seen this graph i, I get you know i get kind of the shivers every time i look at this so this is not up to date doesn't have the new class members but this is the learn power bi family and of course we we got new students from us and canada and europe but uh we have i think one from uh, monterey in mexico uh, I know we have a student from Germany and one from Melbourne and Hong Kong. This is actually a new student. So, so uh, the Power BI family is growing and, and certainly that's been a terrific experience. And really, either you're inside my course or you're following me on YouTube. My goal is the same. I just want to help everybody progress further in the Power BI journey. And I was talking to my students just this morning in a weekly Q&A call and I shared with them what I felt like is the biggest block. And I feel like the biggest roadblock is ourselves. And I think we, we are too hard on ourselves. We're our, our own worst judge, isn't it? Our own worst critic. And first of all, we have to realize that, hey, this is hard. This is like changing tires on a moving car. That's, that's what I always say. And that's pretty hard, I guess. Right? So, so this is hard. So I don't want you to think of it like a sprint this is a journey and i want you to enjoy the journey and what i want you to focus on is forward progress forward progress my friend so every day if you get a little better every single day where are you going to be at the end of the year all right and hey i'm here to help so let's get back to steph and see if we can help uh steph out so first of all, I felt, man, this is hard. So maybe the Steph's uh, solution of duplicating a calendar table, let's just do that. But e even that, at least I didn't find it straightforward. So I duplicated my calendar table. So I have this calendar table and I'm calling it calendar selection. And I can't connect it to my sales table because then I would see the exact same behavior. So it's off on its own, not connected. Uh, and then what do I do? And now I have uh, this table it's showing sales and these fields are coming from my calendar my new calendar selection table but of course since it's not connected there's there's no effect right I mean I can select anything I want and it's not going to change anything so I believe uh, and that's the part that I love about Power BI there can always be multiple ways to solve it so I'll show you how I solved it first of all I connected these two tables so let's see if I can do that right date to date Actually, maybe I should have said that manually because the automatic connection is kind of wonky. I don't want it. I, I, I don't want it bi directional filtering. I'm usually I'm not a huge fan of bi directional filtering. And if you've heard me talk about it, you know why. Uh, so we'll say many to one and we'll say single. Uh, but I'm not going to make it active because if I activate it, we are back to square one. Or if I filter September, I only see September. So now it's there, but it's inactive. And then I'll show you the measure that I defined. So sales was our original measure. Pretty, pretty simple. Some sales amount. But we did sales V2. And let's uh, look at this. Oops. Let's try again. Sales V2. And let's see what, what I got going on here. 
So calculate sales. So calculate is a magic wand and lets us alter the filter context. So I'm saying, hey, calculate sales. And I love reusing measures. I, I pretty much you know do not redefine once I've defined this. So we already have sales, but we just need to change the filter context. <coughs> Gosh. Okay, so um, what am I doing here? So first of all, I wanna I wanna expand the calendar selection to dates year to date, right? because that that's how we want it to behave. When I select September, I really mean January through September. When I select October, I mean January through October. So I do that, and and then I activate the relationship from the calendar selection to the calendar table. So right, it's kind of a, a one-two punch, my friends. Huh? How's that? Uh, so it expands the calendar selection to year to date, not just that single month, and then it activates this uh, this uh, connection. Because otherwise, remember, once there, when there was no connection, then it was not changing any of these values. So now I have the sales V2, and you can see how this is behaving. If nothing is selected, then it's showing me the full full year. But now if I say September, I only three Jan I only see January through September. If I select October, I see that. If I select April, I three January through April. So this is well, of course, the workaround then the workaround that Steph was trying to avoid, but I wanted to showcase this because I, I don't think this is trivial either. Maybe Steph had already solved this. But let's go back and and see if there is any other way we can do it. And when I thought about it, I figured I realized what Steph is trying to do is just trying to give an easy way to select year to date. I mean, you could you could go back here and tell users you have to hold down the control key and select January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. But you know that's that's pretty tiresome. So we don't we don't want to do that. I mean, that could have been a workaround too, but pretty painful. So what I did was kind of a trick play, my friends. So this is. I'm not averse to these. I pull these out once in a while. So what I did was I instrumented these columns in my calendar table, and I have kind of these toggles, current month, quarter to date, year to date. And this actually comes from a production report that I built for a real customer. So it may not fit exactly what Steph is looking for, but just, just, you know, just see what I got, and then you can kind of make up your own mind. So the way this works is these are kind of toggles, so you can toggle it on or off. So you can say, I only want to see current month. That's just October. And you can kind of toggle it off. You're back there. And now you can say toggle on quarter to date. Now, of course, we're in Q4, so October. But if you're in November, it would show two months, October, November. If you're in December, it would show three months, October, November, December. And the last one, you can toggle year to date. And, and notice it just shows January through October. So if perhaps that's what Steph is looking for, a quick way to show year to date, maybe this would work. So maybe there is another way to solve it. I did think about the new bookmarks feature. It enables so many cool possibilities, but that seemed a little bit too much heavy lifting, but it's possible. So hey, I would love to hear, maybe there's an obvious solution to this that I'm totally missing. If, if, if that, let me know in the comments. If you have an alternate solution to this problem, uh, let me know, and I would love to hear from you. All right, power on, my friends. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.